Well, it's now been about a year since I've installed this Solark 15K all-in-one hybrid inverter. My 30 kilowatt hours of EG4 LL48 volt lithium batteries and also my 19,200 watts of solar panels. So in this video, I wanted to give a review of how it's performed throughout this last year, how much power I've actually put through it, has there been any crashes, glitches, what are my pros, cons, things like that. And I'm also gonna get into how long, um, in the form of a percent, was I able to remain off grid throughout the last year as well, because I do use the grid as backup. I just use this system as my main source of power, and then if my batteries get below 20%, I automatically have it go back to grid just to power me for a little bit until the sun comes back out to be able to charge my batteries and run my system. Now in a nutshell, this system has ran like a champ. I've had no crashes. I've had no glitches. I've had no downtime besides running a firmware update that the unit shuts down for a minute to restart after doing that. That's it. It has worked flawlessly. Now I've ran over 18 megawatt hours through this Solark 15K inverter here. That is 18,000 kilowatt hours. So for the last year, for me, that's been about 60 kilowatt hours per day. Now I've cycled through my EG4 LL48 lithium batteries that runs my house completely at night when there's no solar. I have cycled those once a day also for the last year. And again, they have ran flawlessly as well. I've had no problems with the system at all. Now, one thing I have noticed is my battery bank can drift a little bit by a few percent off what the Solark LCD screen here tells me. For instance, when, when it's under a heavy load, it'll show on the screen here that my batteries are about, let's say, 80%. But then if I look on the LCD screen of my actual batteries, it'll say they're at like 72, 75%, somewhere in there. But once the load drops off, you charge the batteries, that equalizes out. So that hasn't been an issue, but it is one thing I have seen with this system. And I am not in closed loop communication right now with these batteries. Now, EG4 claims that it can do that. I have not done that. When I was on the phone with Solark, they recommended not doing closed loop communication. So I just went with what they recommended. And I've had no issues with that whatsoever. This thing has ran perfectly. Now, since EG4 does say you can do closed loop communication with the Solark 15K, I mean, you can look on the LCD screen of the battery and there's actually a drop down menu that says, click here for solar. So obviously they have it. Now I haven't done that. That is something I may do in the future and put out a video on. I just, it hasn't been a priority for me. Like I said, they've ran perfectly. So for those of you who haven't seen my other videos on this system, how this system basically works for me is this is my main form of power. My solar panels connect to here, the Solark 15K inverter. My battery bank right here connects also to the 15K inverter and it powers my whole home when the sun's out. When the sun's not out, my 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage here, it powers my house for the rest of the time until the sun comes back up in the morning. Now, if there's not enough power, let's say I have a few day storm where there's no sun for a couple days and I need to go back to my backup. Well, for me, that is the grid. So the grid is the most cheapest form of electricity right now as a backup. Now I do have a propane generator that I can use and fire up if I need to, let's say the grid was down, but for now, it's way cheaper just to use the grid as that backup than use a propane or gasoline generator. And what's great about this Solark 15K is it does that automatically. I have it programmed where once the batteries get to 20%, it just automatically grabs from the grid and just uses that to supplement it. It only powers the loads in my house from the grid. It will not charge my batteries unless I tell it to, which I can do. But if you want to run this thing as efficient as possible, use as little from the grid as possible, I just have it only power the loads until the sun comes out and then it charges my battery bank and runs the house just off solar only. And another reason I really liked this Solark 15K inverter was it gets installed between your meter and your home. So while most systems, the power comes from your meter into your electrical panel and then you put in either a sub panel in or a critical loads panel, just power a few loads, or you power maybe a 40 amp breaker inside your panel with your inverter and your solar goes into, this is completely different. This actually connects from the meter to here. And then from this Solar 15K, it feeds via three odd cable right into the mains in my 200 amp residential home panel that powers my entire house. So it's a little bit more complicated of an install because you got to pull those main feeds that you have from the grid out of your existing panel and then put them into a disconnect like you see right here. And then from there, it goes into the Solar. So 
that really would require an electrician unless you know what you're doing, which it is very dangerous. You're working with 240 volts. So if you're not an electrician, I highly recommend you do not do that. But because this feeds my whole panel, it's got a 200 amp pass through in here, which means it'll send from here 200 amps from the grid if I need it into my home panel. Now, the reason I wanted this system is I wanted my whole panel to be powered, my whole, every single load in my house to be powered from this system. And that's the way I'm doing it. I didn't wanna just pick some critical loads. Now, if you do that, you still have to manage your loads appropriately. You can't use more than 12,000 watts at night when there's no solar. If there is solar, you can use actually up to 15,000 watts to power your home. So as long as you're careful, which the average person is not gonna use more than 12,000 watts at a time, I have occasionally, but that's because I have a 240 volt well pump, a 240 volt pressure pump, and all of my appliances are also on electric, like my water heater, my clothes dryer, the induction cooktops for heating. The only thing I have still on propane is my oven. That is it. Now I do have energy efficient heat pump appliances, so that helps keep my energy usage down. So I can remain completely 100% off grid with my house and not sacrificing all the comforts that we've been accustomed to like hot water, like using a clothes dryer, air conditioning, heating, all of that. Now, while most people use like a solar generator just to back up a few loads in their house if the grid goes down and use the grid the rest of the time, I flip that equation upside down. I use solar and my battery bank here run my house the whole time. And then if I need a backup, then I use the grid for just a little bit of energy. So that's really how my system differs than most people's out there. And for me, the reason was simple. I want to be independent of the electric grid if I want to be. We've had a lot of power outages here in Texas in the last few years. I just don't want to deal with that anymore. And with our grid becoming more and more unreliable, unstable, with electric cars coming online, being plugged in, with more rules now, with houses having to go all electric, like in California, the grid is just going to continue to be strained. And frankly, I don't want to deal with any more problems with it. I just want to be independent, have my own little mini power plant here, and not even care about rising prices, which we all know electricity rates are going to continue to go up, which just makes this more and more worth it to do for you. Now I have a PDF wiring schematic that you can download for free of my entire system, including how like, the wire size I used, all the pieces of equipment I used for the install, all links to all of the equipment I use, the Solark 15K here, the EG4 batteries. I can get you a discount on some of this stuff also if you download that. So you can download that for free by going to solarpdfdownload.com. And now let's get into the numbers of how long I've been able to stay off grid with this system throughout the year. All right. So one thing great about the app for the Solark 15K is you can monitor all this stuff remotely here. And as you can see right now, my solar panels are bringing in 1,427 watts. My house is using 1,146 and my batteries are 100% charged. Now my solar panel should be bringing in at this time of day at 238 in Texas and it's sunny, probably around 14, 15,000 watts. And it's only 1,427 because my batteries are already full. So it's just using enough to power my house and run whatever the inverter is consuming as well. So let's get into all the numbers. Um, all the numbers I generated to put on my little spreadsheet that I'm gonna show here are off of uh, what the solar here spits out. So in 2023, you can see my total load was 17,953 kilowatt hours. That was 2023. 2024, my total load was 3,650. That total load means the total power my house used. That's including grid, everything I produced, including using grid, everything. And you can see my solar panels produced a little less at about 14,858 kilowatt hours. Now, 2023 is a little skewed because I had the Solark inverter connected for about two months before I had, actually it was closer to three months before I had all of my solar panels um, up and running. So I started getting the Solark 15K hooked up with the battery bank. So I had battery backup no matter what happens, um, but I didn't have any solar coming in. So I had to build all of my racks by hand, which took me nearly three months. So 2023 is a little skewed. 2024 is more of an accurate reflection of what my real power usage and how long I'm off grid is going to be. So I transferred all these numbers over to a spreadsheet. So let's look at that spreadsheet now. So as you can see, I've got two different columns here, 2023 and 2024. So in 2023, the total load my house used, so everything my house used was 17,953 kilowatt hours. My solar panels produced 14,858 kilowatt hours. 
I imported 4,560 from the grid. So that was basically my backup. So I used that. But again, this was two months of using energy when I did not have any solar panels up and running as well in 2023. Actually, it's probably closer to four months now that I think about it. Um, but regardless, um, let's see how those numbers break down for 2023. So if you take my total PV kilowatt hours here, the 14,000, divide that by the 17,953, you get a total PV to load coverage of 83%. So I produced 83% of the power I used in 2023. And percent of time I was on grid. So I used basically 25% of the time I was using grid power and 75% of the time I was off grid. Again, these numbers are skewed because I didn't have my solar panels up for at least three months, um, having that total solar coverage to help me out there. So 2024 is more accurate of what I should see with the current size of my system. So for the first three months, roughly of this year, 2024, I used 3,542 uh, hours, total kilowatt hours of energy on my whole entire house. My solar panels produced 3,322. Um, and a note on this, what my solar panels produced, I can produce probably three to four times what these are showing here. It's just my batteries are full and I've got nowhere to put that solar energy that I'm using. I do not sell back to the grid. So basically I'm just wasting all of that energy. So I need to find more places to put it. Actually, I'm going to uh, send some power over to a family member's house on my property when my batteries get topped off. That's one of the great things about the Solark 15K is I can use the, uh, the generator port to actually send power out to somebody else if I want to. And then automatically shuts down when my batteries, wherever I set them. If I just set it for, hey, whenever I'm topped off, then send power out to that, whatever load that is, I can do that. And then when my batteries get to 97%, turn it off. So pretty neat feature. So just wanted to let you guys know that I can produce a lot more power than what it's showing here. Um, if I had somewhere to put it, which is why I should add another 30 kilowatt hours of batteries. And that would actually get me off grid pretty much 95% of the time. Um, but okay, let's, can, let's continue on here. So my PV to load coverage for 2024 is 94%. And then percent of the time I was on grid was 15% and I was off grid 85%. Now you're probably wondering, hey, why did you produce 94% of the power you needed, but yet you were only off grid 85% of the time? Now, what I can come, with, come up with on that is uh, a reason is there is an inefficiency in when you bring solar power in, you take it to your batteries. There's a little bit of a loss there when you do that. And when you take it from your batteries, convert that to AC and then send it back out to my home panel to be used for the loads. There's an inefficiency there. There's some loss of power in those conversions. So what I'm showing here is that's about a, I don't know, 8% roughly is what I'm seeing, which is pretty typical of systems like this. And you should expect that as well. So you really need to produce a little bit more power than what you use in order to be off grid 100% of the time. And for me, I produce, I can produce way more power than I need. I just need more batteries. So that is my goal for 2024 is when my budget allows, I'm adding another 30 kilowatt hours of batteries. And that should put me off grid about 95% of the time. So that's how it broke down. So really I'm, I'm off grid 85% of the time, but because of that two months or three months that I mentioned, I didn't have my solar panels up and running. It skewed 2023. But regardless, it came out to about what I thought. I was off grid about 85% of the time with only 30 kilowatt hours of batteries. So I need more batteries. Now, if you use less power than me, so I average about 60 kilowatt hours per day, and you're probably going to use less than me because the average home uses about half that. So um, you'd probably be closer to 95% off grid if you had only 30 kilowatt hours of storage. So, so that's it for the numbers. That's how they break down. So about exactly how how I thought. Um, go ahead and shoot me a comment if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to get to those as soon as I can. Now, I highly recommend this system if you want to be like me and be less dependent on the electric grid or completely not reliant on it at all. Now, this system did cost a lot. All the equipment cost me about $35,000. That includes everything, equipment, wiring, conduit, breakers, bus bars, the whole shebang. Now, that did not include installation. I installed this whole thing myself so you can expect to spend quite a bit more if you aren't able to do the installation. But the cost to me was worth it. I never have to worry about a grid outage ever again. And that peace of mind and having that self-reliance, that's priceless. Now that I've gotten the 15K here, Solark, completely used for a year now, I feel like I've got a good feel for it. I'm now going to install in its place 
the EG4 18K PV inverter, which is basically not a mirror image, but very, very, very similar to this. And then I'm going to run the exact same test that I did with the Solar, and we'll see how it stacks up against it. And I apologize to those who've been waiting for me to review the 18K PV inverter from EG4. It's been a lot lately, so I've had a lot going on. Um, but I will get to that. I promise you that. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos just like this on how I'm trying to live less reliant on the electric grid. Make sure to like this video as well as that helps it reach more people as the YouTube algorithm will show it some love. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next video.